Okay, welcome to another video of creating a character counter app. In three different frameworks, we started off creating a character counter app in Angular. We then moved to ASP.NET Core MVC, and then lastly, we're working on Flask. I mentioned in the last video, uh, we're going to go through some of the basics of Flask before we get into just creating the app itself. That way, if you're unfamiliar with Flask, maybe these videos can catch you up to speed. And it's pretty simple. It's pretty useful. I think it's a good web framework. And if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. That way you don't miss any videos in the future. And if you're also interested, I have a Patreon that I created and you can go check that out in the description. Also, if you want to watch all these videos from the very start, there should be a whole playlist from start to finish. So you can check those out. And then the last video, we talked about accepting parameters in the URL and Flask. So for example, we have a user route and then we also accept a username string and then an age string and pass that into the corresponding function. And today we're going to talk about the redirect function and the URL for function in Flask. So I'll probably end up cleaning up all of this except the main route that says hello world. But at the top, let's also import from Flask redirect and URL underscore for. And I'm going to copy our main route and below it, I'm going to have another route and it's going to be slash user slash and then the parameter in these angle brackets age. And instead of the function test, let's call this user and then we're going to pass in the string age. So let's say this is a website for alcohol. Maybe it's a uh, cocktail recipes or something like that. We want to make sure whoever is accessing our user page right here is above the drinking age, which in the US is 21. And if they're not, we're just going to redirect them back to the main hello world route. Well, lucky enough, since we imported these two functions, the redirect and URL for, we can just do that. So instead of returning hello world, let's make an if statement. So if we're going to change age to an integer, right? If we're going to compare with another integer, because by default, it's going to be a string. So if int age is less than 21, we want to redirect them. So we're going to call the redirect function. And then we're going to pass in a string to that function corresponding to the route we're going to send them to. In our case, it's just going to be the slash. And then if they are over 21, so else, let's just return a bold of welcome to the beer site or something like that. I don't know. So let's see how this works. If I go ahead and spin this up and we look at this app, if I go to slash user and then slash 21, right? Because 21 is going to hopefully give us that bold and it did welcome to the beer site because we're not under 21. But if I change it to, let's say 19, it's going to re and it did not because it should be returning that redirect. Sorry about that. Let's spin this up again. Take another look. And if we go slash user slash 19, for example, notice we get redirected back to the hello world. Okay, so let's talk about the real world example where I have a bunch of routes. So let's copy this. Let's change it from user to user one. And then the same with the function, it's going to be user one. And we'll just keep going. Then we have user two and the route's going to be user two. And hopefully you're getting the idea. Of course, they're not going to be like this. This doesn't make much sense, but I'm just portraying having a lot of different routes, kind of like what you would probably see in a real world web app. Well, the problem with the redirect is it's a hard coded string for that URL, right? And URLs might change and routes might change as you work on your project. That's where we can use the URL for function to dynamically route you elsewhere without hard coding a particular route. And what do I mean by that? So let's look at this user two slash age. And instead of just the plain old redirect and then a string inside of our redirect, let's do URL four. And in this, we're going to pass in the name of a function. In our case, I want to send people to the test function, what it returns. So let's say test. So back to the URL four, I'm going to pass in the string test. And what's going to do, it's going to look, look for the test function and it's going to redirect to whatever that particular route is. So this route can keep changing, like it could be ASDF, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter. What matters is the name of the function, which probably will not change. So if we quit this and run it again, and I bring it over and we go to slash user two slash 
19, it sends us back to the slash route, but using now that URL4 function. So the URL4 function also takes in parameters for a route if that route accepts parameters. So let's go to the user function here and let's just return whatever the else statement said. But in this, let's put the age somewhere right here so we can see it. So instead of test, we're going to pass in the name of the user function, which is just user. And then let's also pass in the age parameter. So we can say age is equal to 21, All right? So it's going to take us to slash user, and it's going to pass in that value 21 to this age right here using URL4. So if we quit this and we rerun it, and if I go to slash user2 slash 19, it's going to say, hey, you're less than 21. We're going to redirect you to the URL for user and pass in the age 21 to that particular function. So now if I hit enter, we see that's the case. We went to the route user, we passed in 21, just like we stated here, and it showed us that in the bold tag. So that's the URL for and the redirect functions. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Hope to see you in a future video. And as always, take care.